common place here uh, within Tri-State. I mean, I know we were talking earlier about the players you normally find in Winter's Finals, and granted, two of them are missing, but it's not like you can count Stefan even when they're here, man. This guy has definitely been on the rise, has been making huge plays, and honestly, he's just been doing super, super well. So we have to see how he plays, but this is going to be a tough matchup here because, again, Jackal's been working on the Sephiroth, and he's, he's putting the work on the Sephiroth, right? That is for sure. But again, this is a, a character that does very well against Steve. Yeah, but all things considered, you know, Jackal hasn't exactly hit him yet. So I'm not like that, just as I say that, finally going to get the 13% answer to the 108. This is probably one of multiple reasons why Jackal has been looking at Sephiroth again. It is generally considered, for the most part, that right, Sephiroth wins this matchup. As the Cincilla might be showing you right there, you have something that can contest the minecart. It's going to do it right there. But now you got another one of those cute little setups coming out from Stefan right there with the duel into the Looney Tunes anvil right there. Going tit for tat back immediately, making me eat my words. It's almost like that whole first sequence never happened, Skip. I mean, it was funny because I actually watched Jackal's reaction after he got hit by that. And he's completely okay. And it's because he recognizes the way he just cheesed Stefan out of that first stock. Granted, oh, yeah. a lot of Steves, they, they are a little too reliant on just matching out cart uh, when they're off stage like that. So I get like, you know, Stefan could have probably played that a little bit better, a little bit smarter, but uh, <laughs> Jackal definitely cheesed the hell out of that first stock, man. He was getting bopped the entire time and then took a nice lead. It's like damn near 40%, my goodness, and looking pretty poised. Now we're going to get some bread and butter ledge traps. Good dash attack right there to just catch the landing. The Elytra going to get beaten out by the down tilt right there. That does stuff out by the ledge. Another very uh, big similarity from Sephiroth onto Cloud, who is another character who believes to have a winning matchup against Stefan, or against Steve, I should say, right here. Because he has that down tilt that scoops below it, but it's not going to matter if you're getting uh, forward aired in the blast zone. Ooh, I like that. Recovering to the other side and grabs the ledge. Man, I've... You know how much it hurts to see that, like, they took gliding from some of these characters and then just gave it back to Steve? Like... That's the thing with, like, all the DLC, my friend. I mean, you remember, they, it's the same thing with Sephiroth, you know? Like, Sephiroth could do that Octo Slash. He could do the up B in pretty much any, uh, any direction right on the stick. And then they gave Ridley only four angles with his because they thought he would be overpowered with it. Yeah. yeah you, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it they just throw it out the window for we, when we need oh, to yeah. sell the character, man. It's not, it's not like Ridley ever had the eight angles, you know? Like, if he had the eight angles, they're like, okay, we need to nerf this a bit. That'd be different. But they actually just brought gliding back, which had disappeared since Brawl, right? And yeah. they just gave it to Steve and just... Oh, man, the character's already that much of a problem. But either way, no, you I'm, know, I never I'm, thought I'm, about it like that. You're right. That's messed up. <laughs> that is actually really messed that's, up. But whatever. That's what I was getting at. It's, it's not the fact that they gave Steve a good mechanic. It's the fact that they took the mechanic away from a few characters. No, 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 you said it, and it just it set in with me just now. And <laughs> oh! speaking of setting in, that forwarder is going to set into Jackal right there. But it's not going to be low enough for him to be able to make it back. And now he's got wing on deck, that extra jump and power for those edge guards. Oh, but the block disappears at just the inopportune time for him. But the the anvil is going to do it right there, man. There's no invincibility until you grab that ledge, my friend. And Sephiroth does take a second to do it off of the upbeat right there. Good stuff to Stefan for taking game number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was just some really good stuff there from Stefan to be sure he can close out that stock. But yeah, Octo Slash, as strong as it is, it gets caught up in some of these really awkward scenarios. That was a beautiful first stock. Let's see if we can see. Watch. As he takes a stock, watch Jackal. Yep. Yeah. You got that. <laughs> and he gets lucky yeah. he get mad about it, right? Because he just cheesed the hell out of him not too long ago. But as we get into game two here, we're going to see him switch over to the wolf. You know, definitely a much more comfortable character here. And I'm yeah. not sure how wolf necessarily does against Steve, but if you just play the character at a better level, sometimes you can answer a bad matchup regardless. Yeah, and it's funny because I feel like if he actually did Octo Slash in that situation instead of Blade Dash, he maybe could have stalled him out in time, but he knows he just wanted to get to the ledge as quick as possible. But now he's got to deal with the Wolf up B in the Fire Wolf instead this time around. Going to be fighting in the beef a little bit more. Tried out the Sephiroth. Wolf's going to Wolf, uh, gonna wolf Flash directly into it, not wanting anything to do with the TNT after getting hit by that the first time. And now we are just back into the beef yet again, but the game is still firmly in the favor of Stefan right now, building those blocks miraculously, landing on the top one as it is spawned. I, you know, it, Zone Mezzi said it to me best. Every single time I see Steve on screen, something new happens. Every new yeah. set, I see something new with this character. It's wild. It's definitely a unique character, right? And I For mean, there's sure. just there's, there's nothing you can take away from that. I mean, they basically had to change so many mechanics of the game to allow Steve to have block, which is honestly the most unique mechanic 
in Smash Bros. history. I'm gonna be real with that one. But oh ooh, yeah, here we go, man. Even though Jackal's been on the back foot the entire first stock, uh, you see him just kind of grind out this matchup slowly but surely and able to get that first stock there, getting that down smash off the conversion. Okay, going for some cheeky stuff there. You are gonna lose a stock for it, but you know I respect it because if he did hit it, it'd be like another like 30% on top of what he already got. So I, I get it. No, I get it too, man. And I honestly think Wolf does have the tools to be able to at least contest with Steve as of now in this current place and time in the meta. Right now, it's just still firmly in the lead right now by about... Ooh, but just as I say that, you see the spacing, the dash dancing right in the neutral center of the stage of Stefan trying to get Jackal to commit to a bad option right there. And Jackal recognizing and having the reactions in that situation, knowing that he was not positive there and he was not the one who could approach, but he winds up off stage regardless. No material on the part of Steve right there. The back air, he's going to need to build another pickaxe on the way back right here you best believe jackal is going to try to tack on as much damage as possible before it happens but finally gets that pickaxe and sword back mm -hmm. all right here we go two stock situation anybody could be losing a stock very soon here i like that throws out the cart just kind of like a again like a moving hitbox oh jesus ah, oh, oh my god what the oh, heck is oh. happening and this is what we're talking about man you brought it up how there's always something new happening with steve but like <laughs> <laughs> There's literally always something new with Steve on the, on the screen. There always is. I'm going to start playing the ping pong animation theme song, my friend. My goodness, again, man, just over and over again. Beautifully timed full charge down smash. That one is not actually, that's just going to be too much knockback for Jackal to even be able to make it back with the Wolf Flash time around. My goodness. There we got game number two. And I do believe the set going in the favor of Stefan right there, gonna advance to Grand Finals, winner's side. Let's take a look at this play again, my friends. My God. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get I get the option of going for the forward smash if he actually didn't charge it as enough. I'm pretty sure he would've got that hitbox out and he would've been able to take that stock. Unfortunately, he just got kinda, he got caught in the wrong spot or he just kinda held it a little too long and Stefan's gonna take that W. But hey, good stuff to Stefan. Gonna be moving on to Grand. That is gonna put Jackal down in the loser's finals. Uh, where they're actually going to be waiting on the winner of our next set coming up here, which is going to be between Carflow and Delta Force. Now, keep in mind, the only four people we have left in this bracket were the people who were started off top eight on the winner side. Delta Force actually dropped 2-1 to Jacko earlier, and Stefan dropped, uh, well, Stefan dropped Carflow 2-1 after that. And now Carflow and Delta Force could be fighting against each other, so we're going to be getting a Roy taking on a Link. So that should be very interesting to see how this is going to play out.